Hello everyone. Welcome to this business continuity podcast brought to you by Continuity and Resilience. My name is Dheeraj Lal and I welcome you to this session which is part of our Best of the Best series. In this episode we bring to you some exciting new thoughts from Mr. Abdul Rahman Alonaizan, AFBCI. Mr. Abdul Rahman has for almost 10 years been the head of business continuity management at Arab National Bank, Saudi Arabia. Along the way, he himself and his team have won various awards and in many cases they were chosen the winner amongst other global multinational names. In this podcast, Mr. Abdul Rahman enlightens us on how he has used the BIA as a planning tool and has suggested some BIA enhancements that may be of use to other BCM professionals globally. Finally, he gives us his recommendations for any entity that is looking to start its BCM journey. So let's hear what he has to say. Thank you, Mr. Abdul Rahman. Pleasure to have you, you here as always. Uh, and this is a more formal setup. Uh, this is part of our podcast series, uh, bringing the best of the best in BCM, uh, showcasing great people who've done great things and certainly you fit on that list. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Raj, for giving me this opportunity to mm. share my experience uh, with, uh, with you and for, with whoever wanted to benefit from that. My, yeah. my, my, my good fortune. My, <laughs> my, my good <laughs> fortune. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you have the distinction of being one of the most experienced and respected resilience professionals in the Middle East. Um, I see you as the father of BCM in KSA. Uh, you're the BCM Academy. <laughs> there are so many professionals in BCM who have started their journey under you. Um, just a, a quick, just to start off with, uh, how did you start I, your journey? I don't claim this, by the way. I don't claim it myself, <laughs> but feel free to. <laughs> I, 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 I can claim it based on my experience and what people have told me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your journey. How did you get into this area? Well, uh, 15 years ago, this is my start in the BCM. I was a uh, technology background. I was managing uh, some, uh, I mean, in the technology, uh, I went through many uh, areas in the, in, the, in the technology, in the systems, networking, data center, operations, uh, banking project, big projects for the bank. So I went through all of these. And then uh, there, uh, the business continuity, uh, the bank started at that time to think seriously about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, after uh, the Y2K experience, I'm sure uh, that you you remember, and, and all the organizations actually went through this Y2K, uh, uh, I would say, uh, dilemma. Exactly. Uh, the bank is one of them, uh, was prepared at that time. And then from there, uh, things went OK uh, for everybody, I guess. Uh, but the bank uh, started to say, OK, the Y2K is gone, no issues, no problems, but this could happen by any means. So right. why don't we benefit from what we have done? Because we have done a lot of work. We have uh, uh, established a, a committee at that time. We have a manual how to deal with things, uh, the roles and responsibilities. Said, why don't we benefit from this instead of just throw in everything and, right. and use it for any other purpose. So the idea started uh, like that. And then I, uh, I found an opportunity for me to join the, the BCM and establish it, uh, take it from there and, and put it in the, in the, uh, in the BCM uh, manner. Right. So this is how I started. With that, I want to come to the main topic of today. Uh, when you came on our global online conference, you mentioned how you modified the BIA and put in place new things. And those new things, I, I, I told you then itself on that session that this sounds like a great idea to take forward. So in some mm -hmm. ways, I'm following up on that commitment that uh, it's something that you have done. It's working for you. You're ahead of the game in many ways. And let's get that out to others. Uh, so they can think about it. And as they do their BIAs, uh, they can take anything from your thought process and even take it forward. And I guess uh, that's the collaboration or collaborative nature of the world as it is today. Um, so just a few, if you can cover that and and let people get ideas and inspiration and their own BIAs could then improve, hopefully. Yeah, sure. Uh, as I said uh, just earlier, that in the BIA, the first thing we put there is that 
it's a long term solution right when we when the pia we have to put in mind that we are going for a long term right. uh, solution exactly and this is how we approach the whole organization we are because in the beginning they say okay we can uh, uh, have this and this as in their mindset again it's a mindset that it is something could be one day one week right. two weeks something like that they they don't think of it as, as if it's going mm-hmm. to be months right and now we emphasize it from the beginning say no you have to be prepared to operate for up to one year right so you, when you put when we when we when we you put your responses to our bia surveys you have to put this in mind mm. in terms of resources right you have to put in mind in terms of uh, the policies procedures uh, mm. products services whatever you're doing you have to put this in mind so in the from the beginning we we were anticipating a long term so if we survive if we were able to sustain the, the business for mm. a long term then you don't worry about short term i mean this is something <laughs> it's inevitable yeah uh, so that that's why in the, the from the beginning we had a wide bia uh, expectations mm-hmm. i would say and we were able to put the the system uh, to to cover that for example i get just give in the workspace mm-hmm. there is always a dilemma on the business continuity center how big you, you need it yeah some of course the bigger you have the more co- cost in terms of uh, uh, establishing and and in terms of maintaining not only yeah, establishing exactly. but managing yeah. and maintaining so it's always a dilemma how big uh, how many i should put i know many organizations they put very few seats mm-hmm. just uh, then thinking that they can use it in if a real disaster comes right which which is i don't believe in that so we put uh adequate enough to satisfy the minimum business continuity requirements where we can survive we can operate and then we put the strategy saying okay for one week that is the critical part we have to make sure that the 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 capacity and the equipment and the infrastructure and the staff is able to lift the bank right not to fall down yeah. <laughs> to be able to operate in the in the in the minimum that mm-hmm. is the the most important thing right the survival immediate and, activities yeah and yeah. then you start expanding we say okay we want to expand now we we wanted to add more services we wanted to add more people so we introduce shifts we say right. okay we ha- we can operate more people by having introduced shifts mm, okay So we added this so we can add more services and more people and then we say okay we can use some of the utilize some of the space in the like in the uh, uh training center right we yeah. have the lounges we have this to say we don't want training it's really mm. this yeah, thing exactly why what why don't we just uh, conference rooms lobby cafeteria lots of spaces yeah, yeah. all yeah. of these uh, uh convert them to to workspace and right. let people work yeah so we have put this uh, uh scenario so that we can cover up to we were able to manage up to 3 to 4 months wow. we say we can operate yeah if the situation is longer and we know that it's going to take longer 6 months 9 months something mm-hmm. like that then we have to start thinking of, of like uh, renting or uh, places or renovate uh, the right. areas right yeah so that's how we were able to achieve i would say the one year uh, mm. uh and the, the bia was actually built on on being able to achieve that goal plus plus i think the point that you made on the global summit was the introduction of work at home possibility yeah. as a uh, bia parameter yeah i'm coming to that yeah that was before the covid 19 right <laughs> then when the covid 19 came the work from home of course it was an option but we were not anticipating that it will be uh, used in this large scale because yeah. nobody ever in saudi arabia especially uh, it's okay we know that pandemic and the people might be fear to come to the office 
but uh, the, the curfew where the government is, is uh, right. put curfew, people cannot come to the office. Right. This is something new to us. Yeah. Saudi Arabia. This is the first time in, mm. in the Saudi history. Uh, so it was something new. We have to adapt to it. We have to mm. deal with it. And that was a big challenge, in fact. Right. It was a big challenge. So, but uh, as I said, because we are uh, rehearsing always our responses and how quick we respond, that option of the work from home, uh, we were able to put together a solution, say, okay, now it's uh, something that's going to be, most of this staff will be locked down and right. the lockdown work and uh, stay in home. So let's utilize them. Let's capitalize mm -hmm. them, stay mm -hmm. at home and, and let them work. So they were given some laptops and then VPN access and, and whatever uh, technology they need. Right. Uh, and they started uh, working. And it may be in the beginning, a few days, there was some, because it's a learning uh, experience for them. And then after that, they, they get used to it. They, they run uh, uh, the business usually. There are only a few functions, some functions that cannot be run from home. And we, we were able to identify them at early stage. And we say, no, this has to come to office. For example, they deal with machines, car production, mm. uh, uh, data center, uh, because physically somebody has Equipment, to be there. Equipment, infrastructure, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So we said, for these people, the lockdown, we want to make sure that they are in the office by, mm. by any means. Right. So we were also, uh, we went extra uh, mile by putting them in a hotel. There's a hotel near the, the bank. Oh. And we went to the hotel management and said, we want to uh, mm. all your rooms. So mm -hmm. there are about 70 or 70 plus rooms. So we we uh, we put the staff there that they have to be at the, their uh, step. It's Just walk across, way. walk across here. Yeah. So they will not be affected by any lockdown uh, right. measures. Yeah. Uh, so they stayed there and they were able to operate uh, the these critical functions that have to be from office. As I said, the rest are from home and right. the bank uh, didn't have suffer from from the, the disruption of the COVID-19. Uh, in fact, until now, uh, some functions are still running from home. Right. Uh, they felt that they, 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 they can uh, run it and they can easily with, with no problems. In fact, some of them, they say they're more productive. Uh, <laughs> Because there, there is no disruption, uh, <laughs> you know, meetings, people, and uh, so they, they time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. So yeah, uh, that's that was when when now we said okay, we went through through this experience, and it was thank God a successful experience. Uh, let's now reconsider our BIA. Mm -hmm. By saying, okay, because of the limitation in the workspace that we have to introduce shifts and put people scattered in the branches or in, what, in the training uh, centers or whatever, no, why should we uh, do this? We have an option, it's beautiful, it's been tested, working from home. So people can stay in the center and the rest, uh, yeah. they stay home and, and, and continue their work as they did during the COVID-19. Right. So it, now it's not, it's a, it is integrated on the in, in the BIA system, not only for the COVID or for the pandemic. It's for for any type of uh, disruption. Right. Because if you lose the building, you staff will will not be will. Before we were thinking that they will stay home, sitting idle. No, now they stay home, but they work as well. Exactly. So this will increase the capacity of of uh, the people that can be functional during these uh, situations. Absolutely. So I think multiple innovations. One is a typical BI looks more at prioritized functions. So you know, now you're saying let's even look at non-prioritized because they can be productively utilized during that period, especially if it's long term. And the second one is, can this function effectively be run from, from home? And in some cases, the answer is no. Um, so at least in, in advance, you start getting this differentiation. Yes. And therefore, there's a different strategy for each, possibly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's how we uh, uh, learn. The lesson learned from this COVID nineteen is, is is changing even the the way that we should be 
running our business in case we have any uh, major uh, right. disaster or disruption. Yeah. And, and some, sometimes they say never waste a good crisis. Um, you didn't cause it, but hopefully some good comes out of it anyhow, or whatever uh -huh. it's worth. Or, or, or we, we make the best of it as we can, I guess. Exactly. I mean, it's a lesson learned that we, we try to manage it first and then capitalize on, 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 on this to enhance and, and uh, the, the, uh, the way that we operate uh, through business continuity. Exactly. Exactly. Um, fascinating. Thank you. Um, I think just to wind up, it's, it's been a, a good, long, and for me, a great session of learning. Thank you. Um, if you had to advise companies, particularly in KSA, uh, I, I wouldn't say companies, organizations, so even could be government ministries, departments, private sector, SMEs, not just the big ones, but I would say everyone's affected. Uh, what would be the three or four things you would advise them that they should, they need to do if they uh, do intend learning from this whole experience and putting in place something robust and sustainable? Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, they, they, uh, uh, my advice to them is to start, even with primitive things. Right. <laughs> I mean, don't wait until you have something fancy. Yeah. Because you never know uh, when you will be hit by any uh, kind of uh, incidents that right. could, could uh, in fact, uh, uh, put you in a situation where you will be maybe uh, unable to continue yeah. uh, as 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 an organization. So start, 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 start. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Start from day one. Start now. Start put something. <laughs> yeah. Put something, even if it's a primitive, simple, basic. But at least you have something better than nothing. Right. That's my first advice. Second is, it's not. Don't deal with it as a project. Mm. It's not a project. This is this is a program that's continuation, continuous. Because I know for many many they were very enthusiastic and putting budget and bringing consultants and so on, and they dealt with it as a project it has start and an end. Mm. After the project ends, <laughs> it becomes as I said, it's a souvenir. You can you can. When you have visitors, you can show them uh, <laughs> the, the nice thing. But it, it's not something that you will really going to benefit uh, in case you need it. Right. So that's an, an, another advice. The third is be patient. Don't expect quick uh, changes, especially mm. when, you, when you talk about changing, changing the culture. Mm. This is takes years. It's not easy. You have to continue your efforts and being patient and trying to uh, put always creative ways to to let them say put it in their desk. Right. What, yeah. what what I was always telling my my staff that your success is that the staff put the business continuity on his desk <laughs> where he can see it so he can remind it right. get him reminded by every day. So yeah. we have done a lot of creative ways in in, in the and the awareness and, and doing it in different uh, ways and let the people feel it, uh, practice it. So that's that's my third advice, that share it with people. Mm. Don't go to them as if it's something that you are cooking a meal and you are gonna just delivering it for them to eat it. No, <laughs> let them feel that they are part of it because they are really, and in, in, if there is a real situation, they are the one, the whole organization have to act together. Right. The fourth advice is, is that continuous improvement. You have to believe in it. You have to implement it. You have to practice it. Mm. Because you never <laughs> reach a situation where you say, I'm done. Mm. I am half. That's it. Yeah. For, no. no. <laughs> you will never. You will never. Although how much, despite how much you are, you, you are mature, still there is a room for improvement right. because the ultimate goal is to, as I said, to reach the point where it's it's a business as usual. Mm. If you are hit with any disruption, disaster, that you say I'll, I'll be in a business as usual, and and this will require a lot of a lot of work, a lot of improvements, a lot of investments, a lot of practices, rehearsals, and so on and so forth. So never never uh, say that I'm done. خلاص, that's it. You have to put to say, okay, this year I this is this is the level that I am in right now. 
Next year, you have to raise the bar and say, okay, I want to be in this uh, level and so on and so forth. So that, that's my advice for, for any organization that wanted to build the business continuity uh, solution or program, whatever they call it, uh, to consider these uh, advices. And I wish them all, I wish everybody all the best. Thank you so and much. I think uh, you've, you've talked a lot of things which are <clears throat> common sense, but very smart. And to me, business continuity is structured application of common sense. Uh, we do things normally, unconsciously, automatically, but now we give it a structure, uh, we give it a vision, we get a, give it a life, and as you said, that life never ends. Uh, yeah. And that's the nature of the beast. Uh, but unfortunately, we do need to end this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, could go, I could go on and on. <laughs> but thank you so much, Mr. Abdul Rabban. Um, really, uh, my privilege to have this session and to get these insights from you, and I hope people who see this can benefit. Um, so, so it's your contribution to the world and I hope someone can see some of this and get inspiration. If so, we've spent a good half an hour today uh, to take forward things. Thank you so much. Thank you and it's my pleasure and I, I would like, I'm appreciating uh, your time also to share my experiences, uh, hoping that others might, uh, might uh, see a value of uh, uh, of what, how we did it and uh, how, what, what we were gone through. It's not always easy. It's, it's, there was challenges, there's hard work, tough days, but uh, as I said, this is something, it's a continuous journey and that's, if, if everybody take it that way, then I'm sure that they will reach to a successful and satisfactory level. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.